Hey guys, it's Ashley and today is going to be part three and the final video on the 43 descriptions of Jesus that I found in Revelation chapter one. If you've not seen the other videos, go check them out, they'll be on the bottom. So we are gonna jump right in. So we are now on number 34 and Jesus is being described as having eyes like a flame of fire. Now this is a mouthful and I'm still trying to grasp my mind around this one. I would encourage you to study this one on your own as well. So Mike Bickle says this. Well, I'll start with David Guzik. Okay, David Guzik says this. Fire is often associated with judgment in the scriptures. Jesus' eyes displayed the fire of searching and penetrating judgment. Okay, so that would make sense. But then Mike Bickle adds another note. Mike Bickle does agree that there's, you know, these, these eyes, like a flame of fire, can be judgment. But he also notes that um, it can be Jesus releasing the fire of grace. So Mike Bickle says he e either is releasing the fire of grace or the fire of judgment. And then he says, depending on how we respond to him. And I think that's beautiful. And just think about fire. Like right now, we've all have stared into fire before. And it just kind of, it just like penetrates into us, doesn't it? It could just say, like, woo. Like we're like, whoa. We're like, it's just like crazy looking at that fire. And so his eyes are like, Fire. And so it's either we're looking into his eyes and it's like this fire of love, fire of mercy, fire of grace. And it's just like this penetrating like love or it's judgment. <laughs> now, judgment, mentioned this just a little bit in the other video, but there is judgment from God, from Jesus and and. It's going to be important that we understand this judgment. And I'll just give you one little nugget. This will have to be another video. But I got this idea from Mike Bickle. And I'm studying scriptures to be able to back it up. And I've been able to find scriptures. But there's three ways that Jesus can show judgment. Okay. There's going to be the punitive judgment big word but that just means pretty much there's going to be judgment that is 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 brought out because of punishment we could even make it easier just call it punishment judgment because punitive who knows what punitive even means but anyways um so there's this judgment that's going to be more like on a, on a punishment type of focus okay but that's going to be on the wicked that's going to be on those who have not followed jesus and it's actually a very good thing we actually want god's judgment on these things okay then there's this judgment that's more like a discipline this is a redemptive discipline this is a very beautiful form of judgment um sometimes jesus is going to have to discipline us, but it's all about redeeming us. This is a very good thing. And then there's a judgment that actually brings favor. And I believe that is talked about in Isaiah, but I'm not sure. So when we see judgment, just know there could be three ways that judgment is getting portrayed. Either it's it's judgment where it is that punishment. It's against the wicked. It, and it's actually a good thing though for us. Then there's a, a form of judgment that's like a discipline, but that's Jesus redeeming us. And then there's going to be this favorable judgment. So, back to his eyes. Um, his eyes are like a flame of fire. So, so it's got to do something with the things that I was talking about, but I'm still wrapping my mind around it. All right, number 35, feet like fine brass as if refined in a furnace. So this is kind of the same theme. This, this is dealing with Jesus being the refiner. This is dealing with fire. There's fire in a furnace. And so this is kind of the way I look at it. I'll just give you my little notes. I said, 
brass can mean strong and durable because brass is. I, I guess that back in the ancient world, brass was literally the strongest metal. So he's got these feet and they're like brass. So his feet, he's strong, he's mighty, he's durable, okay? But then we're looking at this brass and it's, it's, it's fine and it's been refined. And, and so what does that mean? The way I'm looking at it is, again, Jesus is the refiner. I actually watched a YouTube video on the process of like refining and, you know, you put the metal into the furnace and it, and it goes down to like liquid, it's super hot, but then it's getting purified. And so that's what Jesus does for us, right? It's like at times, and this could be like that redemptive discipline. It's like, it's like he brings us down. He, 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 he like makes us like liquid <laughs> and, and, he, but he's refining us. It's actually a good thing and it's fire and it's hot and it doesn't feel good, but it's good because it's, it's purifying us. So when I see, now this is just my personal opinion. When I'm seeing Jesus and his feet are like fine brass, that means he's completely refined. He is good. He is perfect. He's also the refiner and he's going to refine us, but this is a very good thing. All right, we'll move on. Number 36. I know it's getting kind of deep, right? <laughs> Number 36. Jesus has a voice as the sound of many waters. Now, David Guzik gives a really um, quick overview. He says, this means that Jesus' voice um, has power and majesty as of a mighty waterfall. All right, I can see that, but it's got to be more. It's, it's got to be more than Jesus just having a voice like a mighty waterfall. I love David Guzik, but, but there's got to be more. De, uh, Mike Bickle talks about this is as powerful as Genesis 1. You're like, well, Genesis 1, what's that? If you go to Genesis 1, we'll just look real quick. It's kind of a mouthful, but it says... In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now this is like, I know, another can of worms, right? But God was hovering, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. What came next? Creation. Literally. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And then he just goes on with creation. And so at first though, he is hovering over the waters. And if Jesus' voice is as the sound of many waters, it just, it brings me back to God's speaking into existence all the creation. And if Jesus' mouth is as of many waters, it just tells me that something big is going to be happening, just like something really big happened at creation. Now, that's just me, okay? That was just me taking Mike Bickle's thought, and then I ran with it. But you should sit, and you should pray, and, and see what the Lord tells you. Mike Bickle also feels that this has something to do with Jesus directing like the armies. Um, he references Joel 2.11, so you can go check that out as well. All right, so now, oh, I gotta share. Oh, this is, this is a beautiful, oh, okay. So Jeremiah 31.25 says something very beautiful. And it's talking about how Jesus is going to water abundantly the weary soul. And I just, you know, seeing that word water abundantly makes me think of Jesus's voice as the sound of many waters. And, and it's like, 
he fills up our cup like when we're dry he fills it up and so like my mind just goes to Jeremiah 31 25 as well all right enough with that one can you see how like one description here you can just go like way over there it's just crazy but that's the word of God all right we will finish now Jesus um he's described as having seven stars in his right hand so what are these seven stars in his right hand? If we continue to read, we find out that the seven stars are the angels of the churches. Now, are they literal angels? Or could these angels actually just be um, another word for like the leaders of the churches? Some people think that. We'll move on. Number 38, Jesus, out of his mouth, went a two-edged sword. So he's, he's being described as having a mouth and out of it coming a two-edged sword. So what's this two-edged sword? I'm really thinking it has to do with the Word because the Word of God has been described in the Bible as a sword. Hebrews 4.12, for example, says, For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And I just, I just really do think that this sword is representing the word of God. And I also totally believe it's going back to Revelation 19.15. Now this is kind of a lot, but... It says, now out of his mouth, this is Jesus, goes a sharp sword, and that with it he should strike the nations. What? Jesus is going to be striking the nations? Yes, he is. All right, there's a lot more. Um, I also was studying Isaiah 55, 11, and Psalms 119, 113, and Isaiah 49, 2 but you can go ahead and look up those scriptures on your own if you want. All right, so now we've got a couple more, then we're done. His countenance like the sun shining in its strength. So now he's being described as his countenance being like the sun shining in its strength. And this is what I said. I like to think of his countenance like the sun after a winter season. How we long for the sun the warmth, and we even expect it. Once it is here, we rejoice, we soak it in, we feel his peace, and we are relaxed and at ease. If we try to look at the sun, we can't. It is so splendid that it makes our eyes shrink up. And I believe everything I just said has to do with God. Like he's like that sun. He is, we are expecting Jesus and we're expecting that warmth and that love and that peace. All right. So now the last one, Jesus has the keys of Hades and death. All right. This is what David Guzik says. Some imagine that the devil is somehow the Lord of hell. Some imagine that the devil has authority or power to determine life or death. Clearly, they are wrong, for only Jesus holds the keys of Hades and of death. We can trust that Jesus never lets the devil borrow the keys. All right, so there you go. All right, guys, thank you for sticking with me. I know that was a lot of content, but it was very good. Have a blessed day. Bye.